In this introduction to controls within AppForms video, we're going to take a look at the external form control. The external form control is a control that you can add to your app form that will allow you to display or load another form or forms within your parent form. So let's take a look at the properties for the external form control, and then we'll look at a demo of how you can utilize those to load one or more forms within your parent form. Once we select the external form, notice in the property grid that we have under the general section, we have a control name property, which is common across all the controls. And this is just a property that distinguishes the control by allowing you to set or specify a unique name for the control. You have a navigate URL property. And what this is, does is allow you to select, uh, and when you click the ellipsis, it will load the navigation form, which will to give you a tree view type listing of the folder structure and forms that you have within the current tenant, such that you can select the form or forms that you want to associate with this external form or to be able to load within this external form control. Notice you just need to navigate and locate the form. So in this case, I'm going to pick the customer details form. I'll add that or select that and then click the add form button. Notice that then adds this form to the list here. You notice it loads the target form name. There's a friendly name property that you can change if you'd like. There's in this default form. So since we only have one form in this case, this will be the default form. And then there's also an advanced settings button. So if we click this, this will load the external form properties. And if you want to pass a parameter value from your main form or your parent form to your external form, you can utilize this external form properties and the use parameters option here, which is already checked. All you need to do to pass the value is locate the target field on your external form. In this case, I want it to be the customer ID field, which is a hidden field that I've added. And then you set you select your source field, which is going to be, in this case, the CBO customer, where I'm going to select a customer from the combo box. So you select the two fields and then click the Add button. And if you want to do multiple fields, then it's just a matter of picking the other fields, matching them up, or and then clicking Add. If you want to remove mapping, then you just simply click the delete button here, the trash can icon, and that will delete it. Once you have all the fields you want to map selected and added, then simply click the OK button. And that has configured the customer details form. So let's say you wanted also to add another form to be loaded in the external form control. So I'm going to select the FRM order data form. I'll click add. It then adds it to a to the list of available forms that can be loaded. Now I can, if I would like, toggle the default form to whichever form I want to be the default. I'll leave it customer details in this case. And then we click the advanced button. And again, I want to pass the customer ID field from the parent form to this external form. So I will again select the similar mappings as previously. Click Add and then click OK. And once you've got everything configured the way that you want or you, and you've added all of the forms that you'd like to add, simply click OK. And now you've configured the external form. The value property is grayed out, but once the page refreshes, now that we've made these changes, this will load the form ID of the default form that you specified in the mapping. So let me go ahead and refresh the let me save the form and refresh the page so that you can see that. So now, again, the Navigate URL will reflect the customer details form, which we specified as our default form, and the form ID for that form, which is this uh, GUID that's in the value property. There's a remarks property, which is just a comment type property that you can specify for the form that's available within the app forms designer. There's a show border property. If this is checked, then when the form loads at runtime, the external form control will have a 
border uh, surrounding the control. If it's unchecked, then there will not be a border edge around the control. Hide scroll will hide the scroll bar from the external form. So I'll go ahead and check that. Repeat property, this gives you the option to be able to repeat or add additional external form items to the control. So let me check that so we can demo that momentarily. Auto height, if this is checked, then it will simply size the height to automatically fit the contents of the control. So I'll go ahead and check that. Load form on rule. So by default, whenever you configure the external form, it will load and populate the default form at runtime when the parent form is loaded. So if you don't want that to happen, you can check this load form on rule property, and then you can control via a rule whatever the form gets loaded within the external form. So I'm gonna check this and we'll demo it both ways. Check dirty. If this property is checked, then this will allow you to at runtime determine whether or not the user has modified the control. So for this particular control for the external form, that would simply mean that they've they've added a an external form. They've clicked the um, option to either repeat or remove some of the external form objects. Uh, so that's that's what would trigger the uh, the dirty property being set to true in this case. Style properties. I'm not going to go into a great deal of depth on these as we covered these a, a number of times before, but you can set the width and height. You can modify the margin, the box shadow, uh, the visible and enable properties. You have column span and corner radius that you can uh, that you can modify for the control. And you can also, with the show border property checked, you can then modify the thickness of the border, the border style, and the border color of the border that outlines the external form control. The external form also supports rules, so you can add a rule that will get triggered when the form is loaded and whenever the form's been repeated or if a repeated object has been removed. That will also trigger the rule. So now that we've covered the properties, let's take a quick look at a demo of, of how some of these properties behave and, and what enabling some of these properties, specifically these ones here under the general section, how that will affect the behavior of the external form. So let's preview the form. So note with the load form on rule, notice that I have the, the, the control here, but nothing has been loaded into it. So what I'm going to do is I have an action on the change of this combo box that once the value gets changed here, that will trigger the external form control to load the customer details form. So let me just select a customer from here. So what that does is that triggers this form to load on, on this form. As you'll recall, I pass the customer ID from the combo box to this form to a hidden control. And once that hidden control changes, it executes a rule to then load the select command for this form, which then populates the controls with the customer information. With the repeat property being checked, here we have the quick action menu that pops up. When you click on this, you'll get an option to repeat, which will simply add another instance of the external form beneath the, the current external form control. You can remove, which if you had sub items, you cannot remove the main external form object, but if you had sub items, you could remove those. And then because we have multiple forms that we configured, you can then select which form you want to load into the external form control. So let me click repeat. So again, we get our external form control that's loaded here for the customer's data. So if I want to see the orders information, I can click the order data form. It loads. I am passing the ID for the customer ID to this form. And then that is populating the data so that we see the order data that's associated with this particular customer. If I want to remove this, I can again, click the quick menu, click remove and it removes that item. 
I can click repeat again. Actually, I can click repeat multiple times. Note that you can then reload multiple instances of either form that you want to see. So for instance, I can set both of these to be the order data. And then I can continue adding additional items below as well. And again, if I want to remove, I can remove them as well. So that covers the load form on rule. That covers the repeat property. Let me now cover what it looks like if we disable the load form on rule property and show you how that's different. So I'll uncheck the load form on rule. And now let me preview. So notice now that the default form that's been configured, the customer data form, is immediately loaded into the external form once the parent form is loaded. We don't have any data because we haven't selected anything from the combo box yet, so there's no ID to be passed to it. But that's the difference between loading it with the load form on rule property check versus unchecked. I wanted to also note that there are some functions that you can also call that will allow you to dynamically add the, the external form components and remove them. So for example, I can click this add repeater. It will insert a, a new instance. If I click remove, then it will remove. And there's also a remove all, which will Remove all of them. In this case, I'm passing it. The remove takes an index, and when I pass one, it's actually causing it to delete the, the subsequent items as well. I can demonstrate that by letting me change it to. change the index to two. So now when I delete, we should only see it delete this last one. And remove all is indiscriminate. It removes all but the, uh, the initial primary external form object. And the code for that, this is the code to remove the second item. So we use the, re the remove repeater function passing the external form control and then the index you want to delete. The remove all is utilizing the repeater click action function, which again takes the uh, external form control and then the remove all parameter tells it to remove all of the sub items. I hope that you found this video beneficial. Please view our other app forms training videos for more in-depth tutorials regarding app forms, as well as our how-to videos that show you how to implement various tasks within your app form solutions. Thank you.